Hey, welcome back. Today I want to talk about this contraption. This is something I needed for quite some time and Robin with his uh, miniature air tool chamfermeister kicked me over the edge to build it. And I'm, I'm working currently on a project where I have to, where I need something like this. What it is, it's a attachment for a die grinder. This is an air, air powered 55,000 RPM die grinder from Biax. And this attachment allows me to, to cut chamfers on free form contours. Um, so you can do uh, not only straight lines, but you can also follow a curve or a radius. And the way this works, um, for the woodworkers or people in mass production, this is an old hat, it's a pin router. Same principle as a router bit with a bearing, with a guide bearing that follows the contour of the work. And there are small deburring bits for metal with a bearing, but the bearing is super fragile and they are crazy expensive. I could make one myself, I could grind down the end of a chamfer and I'll put on a tiny swimmel with a ball bearing, but I think this is a better solution. The pin router doesn't use a bearing. It removes the bearing and it has concentrical to the spindle of, of the router. Uh, they have a guide pin and that allows to trace either a template or the contour of the part. And that's the same what I'm doing here. You might be able to see the, this is a carbide 90 degree D bit. That's what's cutting the chamfer and I have a, a small carbide pin silver soldered onto this, this finger. The, the, this is concentrical to the spindle of the die grinder. I will pull the die grinder out in a second so you can see what's going on. here. Don't get too excited. This is not a build video. I, I needed this right now so I didn't have too much time to film it uh, or didn't have any time to film it at all but I took pictures and I will do a slideshow of the build. Now let's pull the die grinder out. It's clamped here with a single M3 screw. It's a solid, solid piece here and the finger, the guide pin is inset. Uh, this is all turned then machined down to form this clamping arrangement here. Slid it. Uh, drilled and bored to fit the uh, and this is concentrical. This is adjustable. Uh, I didn't want to make this a solid one piece affair with the guide pin solidly soldered into the, the base because I want the option to exchange it for different attachment. I adjust it just by, uh, by eyeballing it central over the, the tip of the deep bit under the microscope and that seems to be good enough. So let, let's look at uh, how this works. We have by BX die grinder, really a nice die grinder, uh, runs excellent, 55,000 RPM and I have a, a 90 degree D bit. This is just ground 90 degree with 20 degree back, back relief ground on the D bit grinder. You adjust the, the chamfer width by moving the die grinder in and out. And currently there is no way to, to set it to a quantified dimension. What I'm going to do is I ordered a shaft collar that I'm going to bore uh, to the diameter of the die grinder. And then I'm able to use gauge blocks between the clamping collar and this, this, this rear face of the chamfer unit. That gives me a direct a direct representation of the chamfer width. I could calibrate it so a one millimeter gauge block is, a, is barely scratching the edge of the material and then just a 1.1 millimeter gauge block would be a 0.1 millimeter chamfer, a two millimeter gauge block would be a one millimeter chamfer and so on. Uh, this can do maximum a one millimeter chamfer but I think that's pushing it already. Uh, I, I built this for something like a 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeter chamfer. That's what I'm intending. I'm, I'm debating myself if I'm going to send it out for night riding so it's hard and then I uh, lap the base here nice and flat and, and smooth. 
I'm most likely going to do that. And this finger is just a piece of, of uh, cold rolled, shaped, a little bit of belt sander and silver soldered in a, a small 1.5 mm carbide pin. Okay, I have this part here, this is a scrap part. <laughs> I, I messed this one up so I can use this for test cutting. And this is actually the part I made this, this debugger for. Some of these pockets need a, a relatively precise and well-defined chamfer. I set a chamfer width and the nice thing about this, this arrangement is you cannot overcut the chamfer. If you, if you tilt it in, in any direction, you, you will never cut a chamfer that's too deep. It will always cut a, a smaller chamfer, but never dig into the material. So that's a nice safety factor there if you work on delicate parts. And then you just turn it on. I blew up the, the surfaces around this edge so we can see the chamfer later. This is a, point, a solid 0.75 millimeter chamfer here and still it did a nice job. It, it, it's controllable uh, if you go conventional milling in this case. Uh, on a very light chamfer you, you, you will be able to do a climb cut. Uh, works very nicely and that's also the reason why I made this guide finger so narrow so it it's able to to go in into shapes like this and you can you can snake your way through there and follow here like this go into the corner follow the radius go around and trace the contour like this and then you have to to change orientation and do the other side we can also do materials like uh, Laxan, of course. A reasonably nice chamfer, a little bit of burr here. And earlier I did, I did this contour here. And this works, this works really nice, following the radii. And due to the shape of this tool, you can hold it really, this, 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 sits nicely in the hand. You can rest your thumb on this, this clamping collar and kind of can control its orientation to follow to follow a shape. You can also use it semi-stationary holding it in hand. Does really a nice job in uh, brass. Keep in mind, due to the fact that we're using a guide pin, the surface finish of the wall copies directly to the quality of the chamfer. So if if there are tons of chatter marks in the side wall of the, the part you're chamfering, uh, you will get a ton of chatter in the in the chamfer too. There is no way around it using a guide pin or a guide bearing. Um, and this tool is relatively safe. I wouldn't say it's it's uh, it's it's idiot proof, but it's close to. If you if if you make an idiot proof tool, they will just invent a better idiot. Uh, the cutter only extends like one one millimeter out here, and. When I press my finger up a, up against here, it's almost impossible. If if I went, kind of came in here with my thumb, I could touch it, but yeah, that's the case of a better idiot. 
So yeah, that, that's the tool. And it, yeah, I'm, I really, I'm really happy that I finally built it. Let's look at the CAD model for this contraption. The green thing here is the die grinder. It's sticking in this large body here. This is the actual chamfering device. And we have this here. This is the guide finger with the pin. This small round thing here is a 1.5 millimeter carbide pin. And this is exactly in the center of rotation of the D bit below it. The later design of, of this uh, finger is different from what you see here. This was too wide from here to here to fit the, the particular application that I made it for. So I'm, I, I made it way narrower. This design here with the clamping arrangement back here, this is heavily inspired or almost copied from Robin, from Robin's Dotco Chamfermeister. And I really liked the way it looked, so I, I blatantly copied it. It, it almost looks like uh, it, it's out of one piece, so it's, it's really cool. So let's look at the section view. You can see that the uh, this, this in front here, this is all die grinder geometry with the collet. This is modeled as one piece. Uh, the D bit sticking out and meeting up with the guide pin in the center. There is really not much to this thing. Uh, let's look at the at this thing alone and how it it evolved. Let's go back in the model tree. I modeled it like like it's machined. Um, it starts as a lathe part. Uh, then some holes are drilled. Then we cut away all this material to form this clamping. Um, arrangement, cut the slot, drill, counter bore, drill and tap. That's it. That, that's the whole part. In reality, um, I added a, a shallow slot here for the, for the guide finger, but that's a minor in-progress modification. Let's do a quick rundown of the machining of the main body of this chamfer device. Here you can see a piece of low carbon mild steel C45 in the lathe and I used the parting tool to hog out most of the material. And I al always left about the width of the parting tool between my cuts. And then I came back and remove the material between those cuts. Um, removing material that way is safer than stepping over just the, the width of the parting blade because the parting blade does not deflect. It's always cutting into solid material that way. Then I took the, the same parting tool. It has an insert for, for uh, plunging and turning so you can move sideways. And I cleaned up the, the, the very wide slot that I just machined. Then I drilled out the center Use a boring bar with a very sharp, resharpened uh, insert to bore it to the final diameter. Here you can see the tiny, tiny chips this reground boring bar produces, and the bike die grinder fits very nicely. So that's after band sawing it off. Here I'm set up to machine the clamping band and remove all the excess material. I'm cutting two tangent lines. 40 degree offset to it using a 40 degree angled block after I cut the first one to, to offset the second one. And that leaves me with this shape here. And then I just roll the part on the on the parallels and do repeating cuts to remove all the material in a faceted manner. And this is the result I get. And then it's just little bit of filing work to blend those facets into the cylindrical part next to it. Drilling and tapping, counter boring for the clamping screw. Then I slid it with a slitting saw. Drilled two tapped holes and cut a pocket for the guide finger. Here is 
the guide finger in, in, in the making, drilled two holes, kind of boarded. The smaller hole is where I will later solder the carbide guide pin in. This is after some shaping. Um, most of it was removed on the mill and then finished on the belt sander. Silver soldering in the carbide pin. It's a 1.5 mm carbide pin and silver soldered it in with a tiny amount of solder. Here you can see it after cleanup. So you can use this handheld. You could use it stationary. You could build this for for your small handheld die grinder. You can use your woodworking router with a small with a larger bit. Uh, in fact, I used my woodworking router mostly in plastic and wo in plastic and aluminium. So hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time.